Hello! In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to get started with the TM4C129 connected launchpad and Energia. This launchpad has a powerful ARM Cortex M4 core with a clock speed of 120 MHz, integrated floating point unit, and excellent memory performance. The TM4C129 features integrated 10 100 Ethernet plus Phi, which means you can get connected to the internet using the onboard Ethernet port. The TM4C129 also has many unique peripherals such as CAN communication, Quad SSI, EEPROM memory, and a USB 2.0 device interface, although some of this functionality is not available on the Booster Pack headers. This launchpad is perfect for embedded internet or high performance applications. For this example, we'll need the TM4C129 launchpad and an Ethernet connection. Now let's get started. First, plug your launchpad to your computer over USB. There are two micro USB ports. You will want to connect to the clearly labeled debug port found on the opposite side of the Ethernet port. For our hardware setup, we will want to check on a few things. You can refer to the TM4C129 hardware guide on the Energia website for the most complete details on hardware setup. The first thing you want to make sure is the jumpers match the default factory positions. Wrong jumper placement can cause unexpected results. You also want to make sure the board is receiving power over the USB cable. This is indicated by the green power indicator LED at the top of the launch pad. Now we are ready to move on to the software. Make sure you've downloaded and installed the ICDI drivers so your computer can communicate with the launch pad over USB. You can find the drivers and instructions for your operating system on the Energia TM4C129 hardware guide. In some cases, drivers are not required. Next, let's open up Energia. Make sure we select our board and comp port by going to Tools, Board, TM4C129 120 MHz, and Tools, Serial Port. Go ahead and run a blink example to ensure the hardware is functioning properly. We will import an existing code example by going to File, Examples, Basics, Blink. Click the download button and make sure your LED is blinking. If the LED is successfully blinking, your hardware is correctly set up and you are ready to move on to your project. If you run into trouble, go back carefully through the setup instructions to resolve the issue. Now let's try out the push button on our launch pad. We will import an existing code example by going to File, Examples, Basics, Digital Read Serial. This is a good example because it teaches us how to use the onboard push button, how to use the Energia pin maps to identify pin locations, and how to use the serial monitor in Energia. The first thing we want to do is change the push button variable to the correct pin for our launch pad. We can find this information by going to the pin map of our launch pad on the Energia website. We see that the left button closest to the edge of the board is called push1. We can use this alias, or we can also call the pin number directly using PJ underscore zero. Note that all the pins are labeled in the map and color coded by function. Use these pin names in your Energia code to interact with the peripherals attached to the pins. If we go back to our sketch in the setup function, we start our serial communication with serial.begin. In this function, we indicated the baud rate that we want our communication to have. Make sure this baud rate matches the baud rate of your serial monitor, otherwise you will not receive the data properly. We also want to use pin mode to set our push button as input pull up. In the loop function, we will use digital read to get the state of the push button and then we print that over serial. And that's it. Make sure we change the pin for the push button, press the verify and download button, and then open up the serial monitor by clicking the magnifying glass in the upper right corner of Energia. The serial monitor will display data that is sent over the USB cable from your launch pad to your computer. This is excellent for debugging what is happening in your code. Again, make sure your baud rate in the serial monitor matches what is in your sketch so you can properly receive data. We see a stream of data that indicates the state of the push button. When we press the button, it should change the value between 1 and 0. Next, we will test the Ethernet. We will import an existing code example by going to File, Examples, Ethernet, Ethernet Web Server. The Ethernet examples are designed to be very straightforward. In this case, the only thing we will need to modify is our MAC address information, which is printed on the back side of your launch pad. After we include our required header files for Ethernet.h, we'll call our Ethernet server constructor and set it to port 80. In the setup function, we'll start our serial communication with serial.begin. Using the pin mode function, we will set up our push buttons and LEDs as inputs and outputs. We'll print out some helper and loading text as the Ethernet connects. Now, we'll enter our hexadecimal MAC address in the Ethernet.begin function and call our server.begin function. Once it connects successfully, we'll print the Ethernet status message, which includes the IP address assigned by the router. 
In the loop function, we'll check the server.available function. Then we'll proceed to check for clients connecting to our server hosted on the TM4C129. Once we get a client, which means something sends a request to the IP of the launchpad, then we use client.println to write HTML that will render a basic web page on the client's browser. In this case, this is a user-defined function called print index. This web page will give a user basic control over the launchpad's green LEDs. We'll check for get request and then use digital write to actuate the LED. When the client is no longer connected, we'll use the client.stop function. And that's it. Press the verify and download button, open up the serial monitor, and wait for the launchpad to successfully connect to Ethernet. Then, navigate to the IP address to find the page hosted by the hardware. You can toggle the LED by clicking the high and low buttons. This is the first step to your next Ethernet connected project. There are many examples in the Ethernet library you can explore to interact more meaningfully between your hardware and the internet. Check out the Energia tutorials and refer to the Energia website for documentation and project ideas. Good luck!